Collectors and special editions allow you to show your love for a video game by buying a version that costs twice as much, but that comes bundled with a priceless heirloom quality keepsake that you'll treasure forever. Hey, do you still want this? We can't fit our laptops on the desk anymore. God no, bin it. Not all special editions come with extras that are just inconveniently sized for human houses, however. Some come bundled with things that are so weird, awkward, or unpleasant that you're going to have a hard time explaining them to anyone who comes across them unexpectedly in your living room. Here are seven of our favourite examples. Enjoy and beware spoilers ahead for the following games, and also maybe your wallet if you disagree and decide to head to eBay looking for any of them. In 2011, the Angry Birds were at the height of their power, planking was still a thing that people did, and Kung Fu Panda 2 was blowing up the box office. And then one night, you brought a date back to your room. And when you dimmed the light so you and your date could share a cosy moment, something in the very corner of their vision drew their eye. They turned, looked, and there on your shelf they saw the small, ghostly figure of a naked, emaciated woman clutching her pregnant belly which was glowing in the dark. This is what you would call a, a mood killer, but also a deal breaker, and furthermore, a red flag. That's just one scenario made possible by the nightmarish collectible statue, which was the centerpiece of the special collector's edition for the 2011 horror shooter sequel, Fear 3. The edition also contained a mini comic and a steelbook and a code for an exclusive in game weapon you shouted after your date, but it was too late. It was Mother who gave us purpose. The figurine with the glow-in-the-dark fetus was of Fear 3 poster girl Alma Wade, the tortured and terrifying psychic who is very pregnant, as the game's key messaging would insist on reminding you. I'm definitely voting for a girl because, you know, Alma's already had two boys, and they're, uh, you know, basically the protagonists of the game, and, you know, they're running around and causing trouble. So central was the theme of Alma Wade's imminent labour, the game had a wave-based co-op mode called Contractions, where you had to fight monsters summoned by Alma's contracting uterus. They must fend off the horrors unleashed upon them with each contraction Alma has. I want to say someone had a phobia of childbirth, and now I think I've caught it, so thanks, game. With Alma Wade's pregnancy being this horrific, you can see how the publisher had no choice but to turn her into a resin statuette to market their game. Except, according to this disappointed two-star review on Amazon, though the concept was good and sound, the execution was not. Unfortunately, it's really cheap light plastic with some glow paint dabbed on her belly button, cheap cheap. Oh yeah, that's definitely what put your date off, the shoddy paint job. Do you remember Big Mouth Billy Bass? He was the humorous animatronic fish that would talk, move, and sing Camptown races whenever you walked past, and was basically what people in the past had instead of Alexa. They were better times. Still, it was an immensely popular toy, which is why Bethesda decided to make its own version to bundle in with the collector's edition of frantic hypercolored shooter Rage 2. However, instead of a fish, they went with the slightly more left-field choice of the severed head of a half-dead mutant voiced by nosebleed-afflicted rocker Andrew W.K. Still sings Camptown Races, though. Ruckus, ruckus, singing songs to the... Those justifiably wondering what the hell this is about may have missed the character of Ruckus the Crusher in Rage 2, on account of how he appears only once in the entire game, in an optional side event that takes approximately three minutes to complete, at the end of which he dies because you kill him. Still, don't worry friends, this singing Ruckus the Crusher head is wall mountable, so you can make sure it takes pride of place in your home if you want every visitor to your home's first question to be, what the hell is that thing? What a party with Ruckus? No, thank you. Do kind of want to leave whoever's house this is in now though, so that's something. Here's Wade, dumps it off. And the basket by Chalmers. NBA 2K10 was the 10th anniversary of the NBA 2K series, and it celebrated its 10th birthday in slightly more dignified fashion than I did. 
I drank fizzy drinks and ate Haribo until I was sick on myself. NBA 2K10's way of marking the occasion was with an extravagant collector's edition for die-hard fans of the series. Something that would really encapsulate what 10 years of NBA competition was all about. Something that captures the drama and pageantry of the game. Rose buries the jumper to finish the break. He can't be stopped. He's having a party out there. A locker. What? No applause? But not just any locker, friends, oh no! This was a weird, small locker, just big enough to squeeze 20 Xbox 360 games in. Or, one of Shaq's sneakers. This $100 NBA 2K10 locker was simultaneously big enough to be inconvenient on a shelf, but small enough to be basically useless. Schrodinger's sports locker, if you will. Yes, there were a couple of extra bits in there, but really what you were paying for was 10 inches by 19 inches of sheet aluminium. Still, at least they were strictly limited edition numbered items. Yeah, they only made 30,000 of these bad boys. The anniversary edition even came with a combination padlock with which to secure your locker, just in case someone came into your room and attempted to steal your precious copy of 2K10, and wasn't prepared to just pick the entire thing up and carry it away. But look at it this way, you could use it to hide the 20 most embarrassing games of your collection under lock and key. Like that copy of Rumble Roses XX you bought because really, actually, it's quite a good wrestling game. <laughs> it's a good job that locker's too small for you to be shoved into it. What the hell? Rise and shine, sleepyhead. It's time for supper. Who, who are all you people? Where's Mia? <laughs> It's good. I don't know about you, but the Baker House from Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is the sort of place I would actively avoid picking anything up, especially if it was shaped like a human body part. Unfortunately for Ethan, the luckless protagonist of Resident Evil 7, he's going to have to pick up a lot of stuff if he wants to get out of here alive, and wade through a lot of stuff, and get his face really close to a lot of stuff. It's a bad time is what I'm saying. <laughs> One of the many horrible things that you need to pick up in Resident Evil 7 is a disembodied dummy finger. In the main game, it's used to solve a puzzle in the world's most unpleasant escape room, but in the mysterious demo that achieved huge popularity prior to the main game's release, you use it to solve murders by pointing at things. Yeah, I don't know either. Either way, the dummy finger is a significant item in Resident Evil 7, so it makes sense that when it came time to put together a collector's edition of the game, Capcom decided that they wanted to include a nod to this dilapidated doll digit. However, you feel like at some point during the design process, someone should have noticed that this thing looks less like a dummy finger and more like, for want of a better way of describing it, someone had an accident and set fire to a sensitive portion of their anatomy. The dummy finger in the Resident Evil 7 Collector's Edition doubles as a USB flash drive, and Capcom actually expects you to be working away, maybe in a coffee shop or important business meeting, pull this thing out of your bag, and plug it into your laptop right there where everyone can see it. At least it was articulated so you could bend it and make it look a bit more like a finger, maybe? Or significantly worse. Depends which way you bent it. The version we got in the UK Collector's Edition wasn't even a dummy finger, but rather a replica severed human finger with a lifelike pink skin tone and fake blood on the end, which had nothing to indicate that it was even a finger once you took the tip off to put it into your laptop. It was just a bloody flesh cylinder sticking out of your USB port, and personally, the amount of effort required to explain that to rightly inquiring minds when you break it out at the next quarterly meeting outweighs my need to stand the Resident Evil series with my computer accessories. Plus, that dummy was a jerk. The only finger he's getting is the middle one. Your return has been foretold, Avatar. A reliquary is a precious container for holding bits of a dead saint, most of the time. Sometimes, though, a reliquary is a limited edition collectible that comes with a video game and contains the blood of a still alive game director. In this extremely rare case, the video game in question was 2018's fantasy role playing game Shroud of the Avatar Forsaken Virtues. And the game director in question was the illustrious Richard Garriott, famous for creating the Ultima series and being also known as Lord British. For a very special edition of Shroud of the Avatar Forsaken Virtues, artist Steve Brodniak was commissioned to create reliquaries of copper and glass. 
And then Richard Garriott gave them his actual blood to put inside it. He had the blood drawn live on camera so you know it's the real deal, in case you wanted to clone yourself a backup version of Lord British or whatever. Hey, no judgement. What you do with your game developer blood is up to you. I use mine to thicken chilli. This curious item then became part of the so-called Lord British Blood Reliquary Bundle Edition of the game. Ready for your cloning experiments or blood rituals or like I said it's none of my business. Along with some in-game items and emotes and why are we even talking about anything except how you might one day have to explain how there is a framed smear of blood hanging on your wall but you're not a serial killer. Spread the word. The, the reliquaries are in process. Want to hand me that vial of blood there, Gorn? Love to. Yeah, all warm and everything. All literally warm and everything. At least when you do explain the presence of this unholy artifact, you can tell your roommate that 10% of the sales proceeds went to a not-for-profit blood bank. Though that still won't account for how you can afford a $6,000 video game bundle, but you can't pick up your half of this month's rent. Wait, no, actually it would. Only six of these bundles were made because although Garriott is a legendary and eccentric game creator, even legendary eccentrics can only give so much blood. Which is a shame because this chili is really missing something. Uh, I'm telling you, it's like a game. Just select me, try, and start again! Uh. Oh. Oh. Uh. And this is why I hate these things. Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding isn't an easy game to sum up. Okay, so Norman Reedus is a delivery guy who drinks a lot of monster energy. He's got an extendable ladder. It's like a sort of Icelandic walking holiday, only you don't have to buy any of the really expensive or weather gear. You have to run to a baby. So there's a baby and it lives in Norman Reedus' tummy. It's a package delivery simulator, but there are ghosts and Troy Baker has a gold mask. And there's like hands that come from another world and there's a beach. When Norman Reedus and Hideo Kojima love each other very much, or away from a baby and you can't drop all of the baby's food. See? As such, it was always going to be tricky to decide what goes into a collector's edition of the game. USB necklace, eyeshadow palette, glossy 8x10 of Kojima and Mads Mikkelsen wearing robes at sea. All great ideas. Especially that last one. But what collectors ended up with instead was a one-to-one -one scale replica of BB, the weird baby in a jar that Norman Reedus keeps strapped to his chest throughout the game, and who spends, I estimate, 95% of the time wailing at you through the speaker in your DualShock. Of course. While it is undoubtedly a strange thing to want to own, it's definitely something that you can put on your coffee table to have admiring visitors ask, what's with the weird baby on your coffee table? Ah, you reply, moving between them and the door. That's my replica BB, or bridge baby, an unborn fetus taken from a still mother that forms a connection with the world of the dead, at which point you will presumably be the hit of the party. Maybe if the party's at Hideo Kojima's house. Still, if this deeply odd collectible has one use, it's in determining which of your acquaintances are your real friends, and which of them are just casuals who can't deal with you banging on about supernatural ghost babies for 45 minutes. Anyone keen on finding out for themselves? You're in luck! The Death Stranding Collector's Edition is still available for the low, low price of £360! I'm good. I can be off-putting at parties for free, thanks. Mortal Kombat 9 was the brilliant reboot of the series after it had fizzled out owing to the lacklustre Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe and publisher Midway's bankruptcy. Fortunately MK9 was a return to form, restoring beloved original characters and wrapping the whole thing up in a schlocky kung fu movie plot. Sure, Rai, you are dead. You will suffer as they did. To hell with your clan. No, to hell with you. The entire game was an extended love letter to longtime fans of the series, and it's only fitting that those die-hard fans also had an opportunity to spend a large amount of money on an elaborate collector's edition. Rather than the more conventional statuette we got in the European version, the US collector's edition, with a K because Mortal Kombat, had added functionality. In it, you received a pair of Mortal Kombat themed bookends to help store books on your shelf. You know, books. They're like video games, but the graphics suck. The only problem is, this being Mortal Kombat, these bookends depicted the sort of violent murder that would make Hannibal Lecter wince. Yeah, my Harry Potter collection is going to look great in there. 
The problem with literature, publisher Warner Brothers probably thought, is that you have to imagine all the brutal slayings, and so they decided to help out the readers of the world with this horribly graphic shelf accessory, in which to enclose the complete works of Jane Austen, for instance. To fans of Mortal Kombat, it's a neat collectible, in which it looks like Scorpion Spear is travelling through the books to staple Sub-Zero on the other side. To anyone not familiar with the series, say a visiting grandparent, it's just a really unpleasant tableau of death and books. Still, at least they toned it down for the more recent Mortal Kombat 11 with this tasteful scorpion bust. Unless it's supposed to be a severed head. Oh no. This is your retribution. Scorpion, kill him. I... I will not. He has been beaten. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Hope none of those collectible items put you off too much. There were other, we could have included well, that, we didn't put that Dead Island statue in, did we? That thing's horrible. Probably get demonetized. <laughs> Don't Google it, it's horrible. Anyway, if you want to watch more videos from us, how about this? It's Show of the Week Live, which is our live show. It's good. Uh, you should watch it. It's, it's quite long, but I mean, that's good, right? Watch minutes. And down here <laughs> is the show of the weekend, which is uh, another great show from Outside Extra. It's long. It's, no, it's short, we're shorter than show of the week live. So, I, I mean, mean, you've got two options there, depending on how much time you've got. So, you, you're welcome. <laughs>